Okay, welcome back, and this is um, the fourth video reviewing the midterm exam, and on this one I'm going to go through the, uh, the short answer questions, and I'll probably go through them pretty fast, but just, uh, you know, if you have any extra questions, let me know um, in class either tomorrow or on Wednesday. Okay, so one, most basic form of weight-bearing, uh, that's uh, post and lintel. Casting bronze, the material wax, uh, needs to fill the space between the two layers. The three classical orders of architecture, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Two weaknesses that create strength, this is question number four, is called an arch, although I will also accept an archway, either is fine. In my notes, three main types of symmetries, axial, rotational, and radial. There are basically three types of clay bodies, stoneware, earthenware, and porcelain. When creating any kind of paint, you need pigment, medium, and binder. The beginning of the Baroque period was um, defined by the rivalry of Caravaggio and Caracci. Early Renaissance begins roughly in 1400 and ends roughly in 1475 or 1480. I would accept either date or anything kind of close there. The period between the Renaissance and the Baroque is sometimes called the late Renaissance is sometimes called the Mannerist period. Okay, next slide. So the multiple choice questions. The intersections of two barrel vaults can create um, a groin vault, E. And the type of paint medium that uses molten wax is called encaustic. A painting technique that models forms through succession of thin washes is A, sfumatu. Time period uh, that is described as Greek-like, that is de-Hellenistic. A major Neolithic town uh, that is E. Kettlehoek. Uh, great painter of the late Italian High Renaissance who lived in Venice, um, painted into the Mannerist period and was highly influential in the Baroque period, um, is C. Titian. All the other artists don't meet all of those. Most of them don't meet any of those criteria. But, um, a means of organizing colors in painting or an image where all the colors are variations of one hue, that is B, monochromatic. An opaque form of watercolor describes D, gouache. The quality of color that describes how pure the hue is or how mixed with a neutral, that is called, this, is, this was a trick question because there was a lot of right answers. E, intensity, counts as right. C, chroma, although we didn't learn that in class, that is also um, correct. And then D, both C and E are also. So all three of those um, would have given you fully the right answer. And um, 10, record history of Egypt begins with the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. And some of you will notice when you get your um, test back that um, I didn't take full points off necessarily, depending on which answers you put down. Uh, to give you an example, if on number four, if you put A, Hellenic, you wouldn't have gotten full points off would have gotten partial points off. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to think of what's another one where um, there are a number of examples um, where I, I gave you partial credit for a lot of you know, different answers. Okay, and then, so, um, the full sentence definitions, scale, to get, a, get the full points uh, for your definition of scale, it needs to include both the idea of actual size and the relative proportional size, both of the actual work and of the elements or shapes or parts of a work. So, because when we talk about scale, it refers to all of those things. Sometimes scale can mean the, the relative relational scale within a work, and sometimes it can mean the scale of the painting or the scale of the sculpture, meaning it's, it's overall size. Sometimes that's relative, meaning how it feels within a particular space, and sometimes that is just in terms of actual facts, such as, you know, um, the descent of Christ, um, Christ's descent from the cross uh, by Rubens is 13 and a bit feet tall, right? That would also be describing scale. Visual weight. Um, a number of people, even though we covered this in class, and I mentioned that in 
you know, there are other definitions of visual weight, like in graphic design, where visual weight is sometimes used to be synonymous with emphasis. That is not the definition that we use in this class. When we're talking about visual weight, we are really specifically only talking about the quality by which shapes and marks feel visually heavier or lighter, as well as feel visually like they have more um, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shoot. Feel heavier or lighter or um, inertia, have more or less inertia. Right? Feel more kind of locked into place in a composition or feel more floating or more like they might potentially move. Okay, so hierarchy and emphasis um, needs to discuss it's basically needs to include these parts, right? The way a composition organizes, right? Because that's the hierarchy part, right? How it organizes all the relative importance of different areas and how it directs our eye and lets us know what areas are really important and what areas are less important, okay? So it's both, it's the things that a work of art does to direct our attention and to, um, make sure that some things are important, some things have more emphasis, some things have more focus, some things have more dominance, and the things it does, right, to let us know that some things should have less attention and less focus and less emphasis, right? And then it's the organization of all of those that is the hierarchy part. Okay, all right, the matching definitions. Let's see, silver point, um, where is it? I should have had this written out have been faster if I did it that way. I'm just doing this on the fly. Uh, silver point is doo -doo -doo, D, a drawing with a sharpened piece of silver. Uh, two, dome is a form of vaulting um, by rotating an arch around a central point, creating a semi-spherical roof. Triglyph, three, is, um, where is it? It should have, yeah, a decorative device used to frame metopes an adored tablature. Entasis is um, the, let's see, the subtle swelling and tapering of classical Greek columns, H, right? Um, once again, triglyph three was, um, where was it again? Uh, G, right? So just to review, silver point was D, dome was um, E, Triglyph was G, and Tasis was H. Sunken relief, five, is B, a form of shallow sculpture carving, which the positive forms are cut deeply at the contour and then rounded, but the negative space is left uncarved. Uh, fresco, six, is a um, type of painting where water-based pigment is painted directly into wet plaster. Plaster itself becomes a binder, that's I. Coil building, seven, is um, a hand building technique for ceramics uses long ropes of clay that's f um, eight negative shapes let's see uh, the shapes in composition that appear further back the ground the opposite of positive j right that should have been pretty easy because it said the opposite of positive nine barrel vault is a form of load bearing that is created by extending an arch in a linear direction creating a half cylindrical ceiling. And 10 tempera is, where is that? Um, it's a type of painting, yes, I. No, it's not I, it's a type of painting, where is it? Um, a, it's A, a form of painting that uses egg yolk as binder. There you go, I really should have had that right now. Okay, that is the end of part four. And in a moment, we will, I'll get to part five. All right. Thank you very much.